Nomad Land is now in theaters and is a 2020 film that finally reached me. Um, I have to say, I was very much so looking forward to this movie given all the buzz, all the critical darling that's been heaped upon this movie, as well as the Golden Globe nominations. And here's the other thing an independent film that is an IMAX, which is something I can't really say I see too much of, so I was very happy to see that happen. And for those of you that need a little bit of a, you know, premise given, it's quite simple. It's about a character named Fern, who's played by Frances McDormand, and she decides after the recession to be going essentially place to place in her camper um, in the American Midwest. That's as simple as I'm going to give it because Honestly, this is a film that's not really about the plot per se. It's about the immersion of getting to understand this lead character. Because here's the thing. This main character, when I went into this movie, I was like, I'm kind of curious with how they're going to depict this. Because I know for myself, I wouldn't be able to live this lifestyle. But while watching the movie, it really kind of was ingrained in me that, you know, I always say this, but even more so while watching this movie... Films are about characters that you might not necessarily understand going into, but if coming out of it, you understand their point of view whilst at the same time not necessarily taking their point of view, that's something that is pretty amazing because we're all different. And after watching the movie, I get Fern. I understand the character of Fern as to why she decided to do this journey and honestly why she chose this lifestyle. So I think the character development in this movie was pretty darn good. And I think also it's helped by Frances McDormand and the careful direction. And sure enough, this director is doing The Eternals, which I'll get to at the very end of this review. But it's very great to see natural directing because this is a film that is weaved in with a lot of natural feeling dialogue there wasn't a single moment where i was like oh no that that doesn't feel like something that would actually be said no everything feels very mundane in its approach and i think that for other movies that might not necessarily work but for this movie with what it's going for i think it works very much so and also the messages like i said those themes that it's trying to hit home also i think are really engulfed in the immersion of the experience and you know going into a movie like this you're like why is this an imax but while watching the movie i understood because although there's not really a score to the movie, which I love film scores, don't get me wrong, but while watching the movie, I understood why there wasn't a film score, because it's supposed to feel as though you are the lead character. And the lead character is essentially only hearing the ambience of the sound around her. And that's pretty much the sound design of the movie, and I think it, it works pretty effectively. Um, I also have to say, David Stratham is also in this movie, and he plays, I don't want to really say like the love interest, but he plays like a character that really was interesting as well, and you get to know him as well. And in a situation towards the very end, it's all done visually with his character arc, and I think it's done really well towards the very end. And you'll get what I'm saying when you actually get towards the very end, but I really liked that. I liked the chemistry between him and Francis McCormick, which really was something that in other movies would have been handled differently, but the way this movie does it, it's great. Honestly, this is a movie that I feel like for all the deconstructions and all the uh, stripped nature of the story and, and the plot, I think that some people might not necessarily like this movie. And by that, I mean it's a slice of life movies. For me, I always say this, but slice of life movies are hit or miss. You might find a slice of life movie amazing. You might find it to be one of the best movies ever. I might watch that movie and I might say, eh, it was dull. I, I appreciate it for what it is, but that's about it. And that's just like No Man Land. You might watch this movie and be bored out of your mind or feel like it's very dull. And for myself, I just find it interesting because I got to know a character that, you know, I myself can't say that I relate to, at least going into the movie. But afterwards, I'm like, you know what? I get your perspective. I hear you out. I understand why you're living this lifestyle. Just not for me, but I get it. And that's something that I really have to praise about this movie. Also... This is a film that it goes in a certain direction that I personally didn't really see coming. I kind of thought maybe it would go that way, but I didn't actually know it was going to fully embrace it. And, you know, it was it was, it was was a nice very end of the movie. And I have to say that although the last 10 minutes I do have to say I do have issues with, not like it's the worst thing ever, but I did have issues because I felt like there was a point in the movie right before the last 10 minutes where they could have ended it. It could have been done right then and there. But it keeps on going, and there is a couple other times where I felt like it could have ended, but it didn't. But I will have to say the last actual, you know, visual image that's given on screen, I do think is really good. And, and I want to say that, although that is in terms of like a negative, I feel more mixed about it than per se, saying that it's, like, terrible. Um, but I also wanted to mention the cinematography. It feels very natural as well, and it's beautiful. Really showcases the Midwest in a very interesting way. 
Um, and in terms of other negatives, again, that's not a negative cinematography, but I wanted to give that as a positive. The other negative is that rewatchability value. Not every movie has to be rewatchable, but I feel as though this movie isn't one of those movies where I'm going to come back to it a lot. I feel like maybe I'll come back to it once or twice in my lifetime, but it's still a film that I don't think I'll ever forget this experience because it was very intriguing. I found myself very much so invested in the lead character and just the whole immersion of the whole experience, the whole environment. And that's something that I really have to praise. You know, all the little details, all the everyday man mundane tasks that were depicted, such as, you know, someone working for Amazon and really showing the details. Honestly, the job that the main character has, like all these jobs, I should say, all these jobs, I've worked some extension of like what they are and they actually do a really good job of depicting it. So props to this film for that as well. But yeah, this is a good film. I can definitely see why it's getting the attention that it is. It's not for everyone, but for me, I think Nomadland is a good film and definitely deserving of the praise. And that's why I'll be giving Nomadland a 4.25 to 5 star rating, which for those who like a hot sauce rating, gets the good old Louisiana Pure Crystal Hot Sauce. That's right. I think this is a good film, but... Guys, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on No Man Lane. Did you like it? Did you not? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always, don't forget subscription, notification bell, and I'll uh, catch you guys later.